hear that psychologist off the telly and he says like hold on a second we get someone else to serve you i'm like what have you done <laughs> what, what's <laughs> what going on here secrets you're yeah. hiding Welcome to Mums Off Air with me, Zoe. I am in the lovely home of Dr. Linda Papadopoulos, um, leading psychologist, author, and oh, mastermind extraordinaire as well, <laughs> and mum. We're going to talk about career, we're going to talk about how you work and have children, all of it we're going to cover. First of all, Linda, psychology, when did you first realise that that was going to be a career for you? Oh gosh, it kind of happened by accident. So I went to um, to Canada to study, and uh, as part of your kind of first degree, you've got to do a psych course. So I wanted to be a, a journalist or a writer, and uh, and I took this this first year psych course. And I remember my professor. This guy was sort of you know balding in his late sixties, around. But I was besotted. I mean, he had no idea this weird little seventeen year old was in love with him because he was just so erudite and he had such a passion for people, for understanding stories, and he completely sort of turned me on to the subject. So I changed major and, and kind of never looked back I was really lucky to kind of fall into something so early that I liked fantastic I love that that you know there's there's you know tutors like that or teachers yeah. like that that yeah. really can shape your future can't they when you sort of when you meet people and they know you're a psychologist do they often ask you to say oh you know what are you picking up from me what and do you do that do no. you find no it's <laughs> you know, just it's really funny. you leave it at work no it's, it's <laughs> hilarious I think people um assume you're doing the other day I was actually buying shoes and someone recognized me They're like you're that psychologist off the telly and he said like hold on a second get someone else to serve you I'm like what have you done <laughs> what, what's what going on here secrets you're yeah. hiding and um, you know I think they you know the assumption that you can you, you can't not know what you know right mm -hmm. so it's like in your job you know you know about how, how to speak to people how to interview and it's the same thing as a psychologist you're going to look at things just because you're trained but you don't consciously go out and think I, I'm, I'm going to, to analyze that but people do open up and it, it's cool it's fascinating yeah and you're like oh really yeah. I mean, let me tell you something get my notebook um, how has your work helped you as a mum I'm mad Imagining you probably must be very good at reverse psychology, or maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it doesn't work on your own kids. Um, <laughs> but has it has it helped you at all? Um, you know, it's with with the little things, but sometimes you can kind of go go too far. So you know, I do a lot of stuff on body image yeah. and kind of the, so for you know with Jesse for the longest time, it's like just on the inside that matters, Jesse, and she's like, yes, I get it. And I remember she was about like five, and we were going to some wedding. I'm like, Jesse, come and let me do your hair. It's like in a minute. She looks like SpongeBob or something. I'm like, come on, we gotta go in a minute. And I'm like, Jessica. She's like, Mommy, it's what's on the inside that matters. I'm like, it's a Greek wedding. Sometimes the outside matters too. Let me do your. <laughs> so I, I think love that. She's, Complete yeah, <laughs> against you all the time. No. They're clever like that though, they aren't are. they? I love, they, and they learn from the best. You're like, oh, naturally you're very clever at doing things like that. Um, how, as, you know, how important is body image to us as humans in sort of surviving and living? I mean, we live in a society where we're bombarded with images of people who are perfect and how we should look and da 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 da. And, you know, how are we all coping with that? Do you know what? I think not so great given uh, this whole kind of era of the selfie. Um, increasingly, I've, I've been seeing, I'm actually doing a TED talk on this in a few weeks about how ident identity construction, how I mm -hmm. figure out, you know, who, who Linda is or who Zoe is, it so much now depends on what other people see. I think that's what body image is. It's not what I look at when I look in the mirror. It's what I think you see. Okay. And if I'm constantly being told what you see because you're retweeting me or liking me or not mm -hmm. liking me or telling me about my Instagram photos, then I'm living in a way in tr to, to try and, and impress you. So it's almost as if being desired seems to be the core desire. Mm -hmm. Your core desire should be to be desired. And beyond that, so it's not even, and, it's, and I think, you know, there's a lot around, you know, and, and you speak about sort of the ubiquity of the media. So it's, you remember the watershed, there's no such thing now. So, mm -hmm. you know, a three-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old, they're exposed potentially, right, depending on your, you know, computer settings to the same mm -hmm. type of stuff. But cognitively, there are different levels of being able to cope. So I think as parents it's much scarier we need to be on it more mm. but I think as kids like one of the things I'll often do with Jessie when anyone says you know aren't you pretty I'll go yeah and she's really good at math and great at judo because yeah. I think that's just so much just more important more important than yeah. It. yeah and beauty goes no matter how cute you are it ain't mm -hmm. gonna last you know we're all cute it stops <laughs> things fall they move around it all starts to slide all slide, what, are what are you left with what are you left with and we know that women that have things to fall back on mm. are happier with aging or happier with everything so. what do you think is the best piece of advice anyone ever gave you about being a mum well, did anyone ever give you any tricks or say, do this or do less of that, or anything maybe that you've learnt through trial and error, perhaps? Do you know, um, I'm an only child and I have an only child. 
and um, I don't know if this is where this comes from, but um, when when she was little and she used to cry a lot, and my, my, my mother-in-law was like, oh, you need to let her cry. And I remember my mother saying, Linda, she's so good, Linda, <laughs> don't let her cry. She's going to be so little for such a short time. Enjoy holding her. And do you know what? It was the best advice. Jessie actually started sleeping through the night after about a few weeks, and and those moments, and, and she always... And I, I think it's fine to do it. Yeah. I, mean, I want to qualify that if you want to. <laughs> but for me, you know, she hadn't come easily as well. So for me, every, you know, I knew that she knew that I was there no matter what. And I just think it's really simple advice. But, you know, this idea that they're little for so long, enjoy them. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. And she used to say, like, you know, three in the morning, although it feels exhausting and whatever, it, 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 it doesn't last forever. Well, thanks so much for talking to oh, us. It's a pleasure. It's brilliant to take the time to, um, to, to catch up. And I'm going to be thinking about a lot of the things you've said, actually. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, you've got any comments for Linda or I, you can drop them below. And don't forget to subscribe. And I've got more Mums Off Air interviews with lovely Rosemary Ferguson, with Kirsty Gallagher. You can check them out on my website. Thank you. Mm -hmm.